We call the meeting to order. Mrs. Krimpaski? Yes. Mrs. Mock? Here. Mr. Porter? Here. Mr. Sherwood? Here. Mrs. Smreck? Here. Item number four. For, de for department reports, um, Ms. Sandy Thorndike. I always think I'm 12 feet tall. I'm not. Tonight I'm going to do something a little bit different. Um, I have kind of an odd educational philosophy. We prepare kids for two things in this world. We prepare them academically, and we want them to grow in skills from the time they're little itty bitties until they're past us and go to college or wherever they go. But we also need to prepare them for life. We have to give them the advocacy skills and the independent skills that they're going to need to be functioning grown-ups in the world. And I have 25 years worth of former students that I really feel that we've accomplished that. But this year we've done something, I didn't have anything to do with it, but we have done something that is absolutely amazing in my book. And I want to call Melina John and her mom, Lisa, up here for a minute. And I'm going to talk about them. And then, Lisa, then Melina and I are going to have a conversation. Melina is a ninth grader at Austin Town Fitch High School. She is a student with a learning disability. She's been with us since she was little. She went to ACLD for a couple of years, which is a school for children who learn a little differently. And through that connection, she got to know somebody named Courtney Cruz. Courtney is currently a doctoral student at Kent State University. And she invited Melina and her mom and another couple, a, a mom named Melissa Walker and her son Paul, to speak with her at the Octelethon conference in Columbus in November. So Melina and her mom and the other set of mom and son were part of a panel discussion at a workshop for educators in Columbus in November. The topic of their workshop was called A Working Triad Partnership, Teacher, Parent, Student. Now, how many times have we said that as educators? That we need the teacher, we need the parent, and we need the student. And they went and they talked about why that is important, why it's important for the parent to be part of it, why it's important for the student to be part of it, and why it's important for the teacher to be part of it. So Melina and I met yesterday, and we had a little bit of a conversation. And she and I are going to replay it. I'm going to ask her the questions I asked her yesterday for her to answer in front of you. So you can see how she feels about her parent-teacher-student partnership. And then I'm also going to ask Lisa if she has anything that she would like to share about her situation with the parent-teacher-student partnership. So, I have questions written down. Okay, Melina, I'm going to let you step up. If you need to make it higher, that's okay. My teacher voice, I don't even need it. I know your parent partner is your mom. I know that. Who are your teacher partners, or who were your teacher partners coming up through all of these years in school? Um, well, so far it has to be Miss Noble. She currently is a teacher at Fitch right now, and Courtney Cruz, because mm -hmm. she helped me when I was little. Yeah, so, so you've so. had teacher partners all the way along. Yes. What are some of the supports that you use in the classroom to help you be independent? What do you do, what do you use to help you be independent in the classroom? Um, to just know that it's all going to come out to be a good end to where I want to be in the future. Mm -hmm. Do you use anything to help you when you write or when you read? Definitely co-writer. Okay. Um, How do you use that? That is a computer app that you could download on the computer and it, it gives you options of words. Okay. It predicts words, doesn't it? Yes. For those of you who don't know what that is, co-writer is a program that's available to every student in Austin Town, whether they have a disability or not. And it helps them by predicting the words they're trying to type, and then it allows them to listen to them so they can pick which one they want. How do you use that 
not on an English paper? Like, how would you use that in social studies class? Um, well, my teacher, they would download it because they know my problems that I have with reading and writing. So they would make a copy and use it on the computer and just open them. So you could then read what you want, type your answers, get some words predicted for you to help you do that. Yes. Now, who tells those teachers you need that? Is it you that tells them or is it the Teach your partner first, and then you follow it up with, yeah, I really need it. How are you doing that? Um, well, depending on how bad mm -hmm. I'm reading it, I will usually tell the teacher. Mm -hmm. And then they would make a copy. So you're advocating for yourself? Mostly. Mostly. Did you do that in middle school? No. And you're doing it now because yes. of teachers who have helped you see that you can do that, right? How about in writing? When you're writing essays for, for you have Mrs. Weiss and mm -hmm. Mrs. Noble, how do you use it to write for them? Because I know they have you guys writing all the time. Yes. Um, well, usually, like I said, she would do, use it on the computer and just kind of open there. And... Yeah, and so you use it to edit yes. and you use it to do words. Snap and Read is the other program we have. And I know that you use that and I know that you use Google Read and Write, because mm -hmm. that's also on the computer. Do you use Snap and Read for things that are difficult, like your science and social studies stuff? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Do you use Bookshare? Yes. Yeah, we didn't talk about that. Bookshare is also a program we have that's available to any student with a reading disability where all of the books they need to read can be downloaded, even the textbooks. The American History book is on there, and I think the biology book is too. Okay. Mom, what do you think about the teacher student parent partnership around here? Uh, well, I definitely feel that it's important to have a teacher parent student relationship, <laughs> absolutely. Um, it just makes everything so much smoother. You know, um, I want to thank the administration for promoting Mrs. Thorndike to the director of special ed. She is an amazing person. She has been at my side for a long time. And it's nice to see somebody that is so positive all the time. So I just want to thank you guys because um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, without a teacher-student-parent relationship, you fail. I mean, there's no other answer. You fail. If you don't have the supports that you need and you don't have people that back you and listen to you and empathize with you, I mean, there's nothing. I can't even explain the feeling of going into a special education meeting with your child who needs help and not getting it and then not having the support and somebody listening to you who want to help you. So, if you don't have that, you fail. So you feel now that you're getting that support from the teachers and everything else? Absolutely. Well, you have one other piece of support that came who is still in Florida. Those flowers are from you, for you, one for each, from Miss Gannon, Aww. who is still in Florida with her family. This is from me, so thank you for coming. But I just want to give a round of applause to Melina for going and speaking in front of that group. I have one more little piece I want to share. Don't forget your flowers, ladies. I talked about co-writer and snap and read. And I pulled up the statistics. We've been using co-writer since 2014, 15, 2015. So far, the students of Austintown have typed 780,000 words using co-writer that amounts to 6,890 days. Melina has typed 10,000 of those words herself since she came back in eighth grade for a total of about 103 days using CoWriter. Snap and Read, we're still growing and we're trying to get there, but we have read in the district 37 million words in Snap and Read. I want that to be twice that much because we really need it. Mastua, 1,836 days. Melina only had 59,000 59, words in Snap and Read, but she also uses Google Read and Write, and I can't track that. So I know this isn't a whole lot of statistics about different things going on in special ed, but to me, this is powerful. To me, having a student who is so positive about her education with us and is willing to go and speak in front of a group of educators in Columbus says more for what we're doing in Austin Town than any statistic I can come up with. So thank you, Melina and Lisa. Mr. Ventresco. I don't know if you heard me. I said I don't know if I could if I could top that. 
You won't. Uh, I'm going on script. I think that was off script. Um, good news for Mr. Schmreck. We anonymously decided that you'll take Dr. Ritchie's duty of keeping me on time. Okay. So like when I start to... It's, yep, yep, yep. Um, hi, I'm Tom Ventresco. I'm the technology coordinator for the district. And uh, Mr. Sherwood teases me sometimes. He knows that part of my day is putting out fires. The front end of the school year has been a lot of a lot of small fires, things that can are, are containable. Um, I, th I think you're going to hear what you, even what you just heard from Mrs. Thorndike. A lot of gear in the district, a lot of use. Um, we're on our second or third round of some of this stuff. Okay. Um, one of the big things that I do that, that I feel is very important is, <clears throat> pardon me, is progress book. And I and I I tease some of our staff members. I'm a hundred percent. There's no one I can't get into Progress Book, okay? So if you have trouble getting into Progress Book, get a hold of me. I will get you, I will get you in there, especially grades 6 through 12, uh, students and, and parents. Um, I'm sure it doesn't come to anyone's uh, a surprise. Our 6 to 12 Chromebook projects moving forward. Um, in the state of Ohio, about 85% 80, of school districts use Chromebooks as their, their, their testing platform for OSTs more and more every day are going to one-to-one. -one. So, um, like I said, we're, we're moving through our second generation of some of the stuff, or our third generation. Um, this summer, we replaced the, uh, the whole Gen 1 fleet, which were the original ones that we bought in 2014. Um, so AMS started their school year with brand new uh, Gen 5s, which, when they're, and they're pretty nice. At Fitch, I, was, I had the privilege of working with Mrs. Caruso, who I'm sure you know this, she administers the ACT in Austin Town. So she, every, all the test administrators kind of fall underneath her for the ACT. What did we do this year for the ACT? We administered it online, okay, or via, via Chromebook, okay? No one's done that yet. Um, it was okay. It, we, it went off here without a hitch. I'm not, I don't, I'm not sure I know what the advantage of it is. It was... But, but as far as the gear go, it, it, it worked. So more and more testing platforms are going to Chromebooks and testing online. If that's good or not, I don't know that, but it worked. Okay. Um, oh, big thing is uh, grades K to 12, all the staff members have Chromebooks. Uh, we moved uh, Chromebooks for teaching staff to AES and AIS um, right as Christmas winter break occurred, so that's all going forward. Um, if you're in the IT industry, uh, security is a, a pain, but it's a, just a, it's out there now, especially especially nowadays. Things have ramped up here for some reason for for, for Austin Town. Um, access student accounts have been under attack since the spring, and I thought nothing I do that's special here. Why they missed us? I just thought, okay, they skip the A's for some reason. And uh, that's changed. There's a post on Falcon Nation that if you're from uh, the graduating class of 2019, you should go read my post, okay? Your accounts, of, your, accounts your student accounts for Google have been disabled and expired. That doesn't mean that they can't be reactivated, okay? The general rule has been a graduating class, I leave their stuff open for a year. Why? Because they need it. They, there's stuff that they left there after they graduated and they want it when they're in college. It hasn't really been a big problem for me. What's happened now is many of these accounts are getting compromised and they're getting used to send out spam and, fit and all this stuff. So Google kind of crushes that. So we had to close down all of those accounts. I've already opened a couple dozen of them back up for active students that are in college. They need their stuff. They're fantastic. They understand. I explain to them just what I'm explaining to you. Like, yeah, give me 30 days. I'll get, get everything out of there, and it's, it's, it's working uh, very well. Uh, that post is on Falcon Nation. Um, we don't just throw things in the dumpster when it comes to electronics here. We had another summer of recycling. If anybody needs to see our recycling certificates, they're in my email. Uh, we're on the edge of a 034 project. 
I have some money put away for to start replacing some of the the gear that comes with AES and AIS. Some of it's starting to show its age, so that stuff is going to start to get, re, get replaced. Um, as that starts to take a little more shape, I'll, I'll give you more details. <clears throat> Pardon me. It's our twenty-first year of participating in the federal E-rate program. It's it's underway, so that's always joy. Um, and then finally, I wanted to give a thank you to Mr. Swavel, who talked me into advising the Technology Club for Fitch High School, which meets Tuesdays and Thursdays and 2.20 at Fitch, after school. Um, they, had not, they had not had an advisor for a couple years. I'm like, I'll, I'll do it. Let's do it. Oh, I love it. So They're so fun. Um, we were meeting once a week, and then Eli convinced me that he thinks we should meet twice a week. So we meet twice a week. At Fitch, we're tearing things apart. Uh, they need to get a little focus on what they want to do. So that's kind of the stage that we're in right now. Is uh, you know, technology is such a broad topic. What, what do you want to do? So we're, I'm having a lot of fun with them. But I want to thank Mr. Swavel for that because uh, that's been the highlight of my school year so far. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> On to item number five, building reports. Uh, Mr. Race from Fitch High School. Here's our Fitch High School news and notes for January. We welcomed back our staff and students last week. It was wonderful to have such a long break. Everybody came back really refreshed, ready to go, really energized. It was great to hear what our staff had been up to over the time off and our students as well. So that was exciting. Next week, our first semester will come to an end. A lot of our seniors seems are becoming Bon Jovi fans because we're halfway there already. And all of the senior activities, graduation, senior banquet, and everything will start to pop up much sooner, I think, than anybody's expecting. Tomorrow, very exciting at Fitch, we have a representative from the junior ROTC is coming all the way from the state of Alabama to tour the building. We're looking at starting a junior ROTC program, if not next year, sometime in the near future. Um, and this is one of the formalities they go through. They do a site visit. You have to have a variety of conditions to meet. Um, and we'll be learning more about that tomorrow. And of course, we'll be keeping everybody informed about where we're at with that project. Speaking of projects, we submitted a bid last year to host the 2021 State Speech and Debate Tournament. Um, that bid was approved. So in March next year, we will be bringing hundreds of students, coaches, and judges from all around Ohio to campus, not just at Fitch. They'll be using, I'm sure, the middle school, probably the intermediate school as well. So big event, really great way to showcase everything we have here, our facilities. We're looking forward to that, too. Our sports are continuing this winter. We have basketball, swimming, bowling, and wrestling ongoing. Our quiz bowl team as well started their season last week. Uh, they're one and one so far. We're expecting some great things from them this year. And then things upcoming tomorrow night, 6 p.m., we have the Creative Arts Night. Saturday, January 25th is the band Jazz and Dessert. Our sophomores who are considering the Career Center will be traveling out there at the end of the month, take a tour of the facilities, see if that's really a route they want to go. We have a PTSA winter dance on February 1st, a veteran's spaghetti dinner on February 4th, and also in February we have the statewide ACT, which we'll be giving to all of our juniors as well. So we're continuing to move ahead as we get into the winter months. Thanks everyone, have a great night. Mr. Del Torrio from middle school. Good evening, everyone. Uh, highlights and updates from the middle school. Tomorrow is our final red and blue basketball game. The boys and girls will play against each other. Um, this is a very special event. I enjoy it very much. Um, this year's eighth grade class is especially talented. Uh, so if you are free, that's a, it's a great thing to watch. Uh, our second quarter is coming to an end. Grades will be in, and at the middle school, 
We showcase our students' academic achievements with our assemblies where uh, students will receive high honor, honor roll, honorable mention, uh, perfect attendance awards for the quarter, as well as uh, bug awards where any students who brought up their grades can earn that award. And then the second half of those banquets, or the second half of those assemblies are a spirit award where they compete against houses. You can see the colors of the t-shirts back here. They sit with their houses and cheer on their specific house color for a spirit award, and those are very fun. We are happy to welcome Ms. Lori Garland to our uh, secretary position after wi wishing our previous secretary of 30 years, uh, Mrs. Cheryl Gennaro, uh, a happy retirement. So we're happy to have her. Coming up, we got our talent show, PT. The PTA puts it on, it's a great spectacle. Uh, that'll be in March, but they are having, <laughs> it is a spectacle, it's a great. <laughs> They are having um, rehearsals, getting ready for that, and so it's exciting. There's a buzz going around about our talent show. We have a couple speakers coming in to AMS to inspire some of our students. Coach Tim Brown, a motivational speaker. Mrs. Vickers was able to land, will be coming February 7th to talk to the school about making good choices and finding uh, motivation in school and in life. And a, an author, Matthew De La Pena, who is a Newbery uh, Medal winner, as well as an NCTE Intellectual Freedom Award winner. He's written over uh, seven young adult novels. He'll be in to talk about the students and about the career of an author. So those are AMS updates. Thank you. Papagallo from the Intermediate School. On behalf of the AIS family, I want to wish the board uh, a happy new year. It's been a great start so far and we're really enjoying it. Uh, we have a few things uh, going on. We just finished up our map, our iReady math testing this past week. Um, yesterday we had uh, an assembly for our students, NED, uh, it's for Positive Mindset, it's an acronym for Never Give Up, Encourage Others and Always Do Your Best. It was a pretty powerful message and the students thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, we have homeroom photos coming up next week, uh, World Read Aloud Day is coming up on January 31st, so we'll be contacting some of you to come out and hopefully you have some time with your busy schedules to come read to our students, it's a pretty fun day. We have um, a couple field trips coming up um, in February. The fifth graders, we're going to be going down to uh, Powers Auditorium for a YSU Dance Theater of Harlem. And we have uh, the Phantoms hockey game, which we've been going to the last couple of years. The third and fourth graders will be going to that. So we're looking forward to that. And want to give a shout out to Alicia Burnfield and Scott Doan. Alicia is our lead math teacher. Uh, she's been staying after with Club Invention, staying with kids after school where they do experiments and make inventions. It's pretty neat. Scott Doan uh, started up a fifth grade student council uh, where they're helping out in throughout the building um, and doing a, different areas of leadership and passing out positive notes. It's pretty good. Um, I want to give a shout out to Tom Ventresco and Monica Pollan. They um, been working very, very hard with the Chromebooks and there are a lot of behind the scenes and the amount of work they put in. We're very thankful for that and the staff is very appreciative to you, Tom. And Nancy Bellotta, uh, this past, she works in our library and cafeteria. This past summer she was diagnosed with stomach cancer. She comes to work every day, chin held high, and you would never know it. She stays positive and she does an incredible job and I just wanted to recognize her at that time. That's our report for AIS. Kathy Dorbish with our elementary update. Good evening, everyone. These are the happenings at AES. Um, academics, we too just completed the second iReady diagnostic. We did reading before break and math after. Um, the teachers have just adjusted instructional groups and will be monitoring their intervention.
Uh, January and February, AES is going to be holding our first annual Parent Student Family Day for Math and Reading. Parents are invited to come to school to participate in a lesson during the school day with their student. Uh, in February, we are going to have two service projects going on at AES. Uh, students are going to be sending valentines to veteran Major Bill White from California. Major White is 104 years old and a retired World War II vet. Um, we were asked by our local VFW to participate. And we're also going to be coloring valentines for the Ohio Department of Aging. Um, these valentines are going to be distributed to our local nursing homes. Um, finally, a shout out to Mrs. Pizzullo, who is a kindergarten teacher at AES. Um, she received the first 2020 Duncan Class Act Award, and she was on the news this morning with the kids, so it was very exciting. Thank you. Item number six, upon the recommendation of the treasurer, approve the agenda for the January 15th, 2020 Board of Education regular January session. Second. Vote. Mrs. Mock? Yes. Mrs. Krimpaski? Yes. Mr. Porter? Yes. Mr. Sherwood? Yes. Mrs. Smreck? For number seven, we have nobody signed up for the public comment section of the agenda. Item eight. Upon the recommendation of the treasurer, approve the following items A through J by consent action. Mrs. Krampaski? Yes. Mrs. Mock? Yes. Mr. Porter? Yes. Mr. Sherwood? Yes. Mrs. Smreck? Yes. Item nine. Upon the recommendation of the treasurer, approve the master agreement between Side Effects Incorporated and the Austin Local School District to deliver to the district advertising revenue. Mrs. Smreck? Mrs. Krampaski? Yes. Mrs. Mock? Yes. Mr. Porter? Yes. Mr. Sherwood? Yes. Ten, upon the recommendation of the treasurer, approve Teresa Emmerling for continued fiscal support through the Mahoning Valley COG until the June until June 30th, 2020. Second. Mrs. Mock? Yes. Mr. Sherwood? Yes. Mrs. Krampaski? Yes. Mr. Porter? Yes. Mrs. Smreck? Item 11, upon the recommendation of the superintendent, approve the following personnel items one through three by consent action. <clears throat> Mrs. Smreck, yes. Mrs. Mock, yes. Mrs. Krampaski, yes. Mr. Porter, yes. Mr. Sherwood. Yes. <coughs> Twelve, upon the recommendation of the superintendent, approve the MOU between OPSI Local 194 and the Austin Board of Education with regard to the operation of the federally funded Summer Food Service Program regarding posting, selection, in compensation of food service personnel. This MOU is effective May 20, May 2020 through August 2020 and will be reassessed for need every year. So moved. Second. Take vote. Mr. Sherwood? Yes. Mrs. Krampaski? Yes. Mrs. Mock? Yes. Mr. Porter? Yes. Mrs. Smreck? Yes. 13. Upon the recommendation of the superintendent, approve the clinical affiliation agreement with Stark State College, whereas Stark State College of North Canton, Ohio has established an associate degree of dietetic technician program, and whereas the Austin Local School District has the facilities and resources to provide the instructional phase necessary to the program. Therefore, in consideration of the respective covenants, promises, conditions, and terms to be performed, by each set forth in the agreement, the parties acknowledge it would be to their mutual benefit and to the benefit of the community 
to promote, develop, and maximize utilization of community resources. Mrs. Mock, Mrs. Krampaski, yes. Mr. Porter, yes. Mr. Sherwood, yes. Mrs. Smreck. 14, upon the recommendation to direct the superintendent to notify the Ohio Department of Education that the Austin Local School District will again be an open enrollment district in the 2020-21 school year. So moved. Second. Vote. <clears throat> Mr. Sherwood? Yes. Mrs. Mock? Yes. Mrs. Krampaski? Yes. Mr. Porter? No. Mrs. Smreck? Upon the recommendation of the superintendent, approve the MOU by and between Kent State University and the Austin Local School District to participate in the College Credit Plus Program, CCP, with Kent State University to provide the multiple opportunities for secondary school students in grades seven through 12 who are Ohio residents to enroll in college level courses on a full or part-time basis and complete allowable academic, non-sectarian, non-remedial courses for high school and college credit pursuant to Ohio Revised Code 336502. This agreement is in effect for the 2020-21 academic year. Mrs. Smreck? Mrs. Krampaski? Yes. Mrs. Mock? Yes. Mr. Porter? Yes. Mr. Sherwood? Yes. 16. Upon the recommendation of the superintendent, approve continued membership in the Ohio High School Athletic Association for the 2020-2021 school year as required by the OHSAA's constitution. Take a vote. Mrs. Mock? Mrs. Smreck? Mrs. Krampaski? Yes. Mr. Porter? Yes. Mr. Sherwood? Yes. 17. Upon the recommendation of the superintendent, approve a building use permit for Mahoning Valley Skywarn to use the Fitch Auditorium for the purpose of tornado spotting training with a meteorologist from the Cleveland National Weather Service at a date and time to be determined during the month of March or April 2020. Building use fees will be waived for this community service training. Mrs. Krampaski? Yes. Mrs. Smreck? Yes. Mrs. Mock? Yes. Mr. Porter? Yes. Mr. Sherwood? Yes. 18. Upon the recommendation of the superintendent, approve the readoption of the required board policy IJA career advising. So moved. Vote. Mr. Sherwood? Yes. Mrs. Krampaski? Yes. Mrs. Mock? Yes. Mr. Porter? Yes. Mrs. Smreck? 19. Upon the recommendation of the superintendent, approve the service agreement between the Mahoning Valley Regional Council of Government and the Austin Local School District, whereas the Mahoning Valley COG shall provide career counselor to the school two days per week during the 2019-20 school year. So move. Second. Take the vote. Mr. Sherwood? Yes. Mrs. Mock? Mrs. Krampaski? Yes. Mr. Porter? Yes. Mrs. Smreck? I make a motion to add item 20 to approve February 20th, the third Thursday, and the third Thursday moving forward for board meetings. Take a vote. Mrs. Mock? Yes. Mrs. Krampaski? Yes. Mr. Porter? Yes. Mr. Sherwood? Yes. Mrs. Smreck? Yes. <clears throat> Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, real quick, a couple things. On behalf of the Board of Education, we'd like to sincerely thank the Disabled American Veterans uh, Chapter 2 of Austintown for the five flags that they donated and uh, raised up around the campus. So we want to thank them on behalf of their kind gesture to us. 
And then also, as everyone knows, January is Board Recognition Month. And uh, if you've never been a board member, you don't really understand what it is to serve the community, serve the kids, and making sure that you have always the kids' interest uh, at, at your heart. And uh, there's no doubt that uh, Kim coming on now has replaced Doc and five of the finest board members that uh, I've been around in my 31 years. So I just want to take this time and have you join me to recognize uh, the Austin Town Board of Education and give you a little bit of uh, how long they've been here. So First, Kim, just let you know the state does not give you a certificate yet because you just came on. So I just want to make sure you know that. <clears throat> Starting with our board president, Don Sherwood. He's been on the board since 2018. And thank you, sir, for everything you do. Thank you. And the vice president, Robin Krimpaski, has been on the board since 2018 as well. Thank you so much, Robin. Next, uh, board member Harold Porter. And uh, Harold, you've been on the board since 2012, second election. So, congratulations on that and thank you for what you do. And then, the longest serving board member so far <laughs> since 2010, right? 2010, board member Kathy Mock. Thank you so much, Kathy. Again, thank you, board, and, and thank you for all you do for Austin Town community and also the kids as well. I just want to wish Kim or, or to uh, the board. Uh, it's going to be fun. I promise. together but uh, we welcome you here and I think just a quick side comment it's a new year we've got a really in my opinion in the board's opinion I'm sure a really good leadership team in this district that means buildings departments running the district um, a lot has happened in the last year we've got a really good team in place in a lot of places and I'm looking forward to the rest of this year and beyond um, Harold, I want to congratulate you on your re-election to the board. And Kim, I want to welcome you as a new board member. Uh, and I just want to echo what Don said, too. I think we have a very strong team in place, and I look forward to working together, uh, which with an approach of professionalism and transparency, and it's going to be a great 2020 moving forward. Happy New Year, everyone. I just want to thank everybody for welcoming me. Um, and I really want to say, Melina, I'm so proud of you. You did so awesome. Um, and, and you've come so far with, with the help of your mom. Um, just, I'm really proud of you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I'd like to, I'd like to welcome Kim. Um, <clears throat> Welcome aboard the Austin Town Board of Education and uh, excited to be here and, and glad to work with you guys in the, uh, another year in 2020. Thank you. Mrs. Krimpaski, yeah. Mrs. Mock, Mr. Porter, yeah. Mr. Sherwood, yeah. Mrs. Smreck. in association with Austin Town Local Schools and Austin Town Township.